friend Vincent Violin Maker. I've just been tweaking this violin, moving the sound post. Uh, it had a bit of a wolf note on the A. I've got rid of it. Um, the the uh, sound post was a little bit too close to the bridge and a little bit too far out from the bridge. So I've just altered that. And this is what I'm tackling on this one. It basically, there's, I like the sound of this one, but it's got a little issue. on the A string. The open A wants to fight for some reason. It's not always, but it's quite keen to produce a harmonic. And the good old sound post setter. Can't beat these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook this around the bottom of the post and then pull it that way, which has actually freed it up completely. I'm now gonna move it to a position I see as more appropriate. I've got the top where I want it. I'm now gonna push the bottom out. How's that looking? Well, that's... That certainly is more of what I want. How's that sounding? Cured it completely. I don't need to go any further. Really happy with it now. It's got a lovely sound, it's really nice. That has what I look for in a violin. That is to say, it's a good volume. It's nice and ringy. So, you know, if you play a note and then kill that note instantly, you hear the note ringing on in the neighboring strings. That, that's a great thing to have in a violin. It sort of makes it easy to play, makes it easier to play in tune, which is really important. Um, yeah, if you were going to buy a violin, if you were going to order a violin, what would you look for? Personally, and I can only tell you what I think, I would be looking for a violin that I really like the look of. Because if you don't like the look of it, you won't pick it up. If you don't pick it up, you won't play it. You know, you'll find yourself playing your old violin instead should feel nice under the hands. If it's not ergonomically, if, if it's not tactile, if it, you won't pick it up, you won't play it, same thing. Ergonomically, it should work. So, you know, the body stop should be about right. Scale length should be close to what you like. Um, it, should, it should stay in tune. Those sort of things should work. You know, the tuning peg should work freely and what have you. Um, and uh, it should produce the sound you like, because after all, these are pretty much just tools for making music, aren't they? So what I look for in a violin, this one has. It's loud, but not painful. It's got an edge to the sound. It's got enough treble to cut through in certain situations. And it's got plenty of mid-range. I kind of say that a violin should have... It, it should be like you've turned up the mid-range to the point almost where you start to think there's too much of it because that's what carries a violin through in a mix. It's really important. Um, and it's nice if it's got a bit of bottom end as well. Although in most music situations, that won't carry, but it, that richness of the bottom end is, is great for the person playing it. So, that one works for me, it's for sale this one actually. It's on my website, I'll put a link below. Um, if I were ordering a violin, I would, this sounds really silly, I'd find the person whose work I like most. If you can find a chap, a lady, who makes violins, 
who you which you really admire, get one from them. Why would you not? You're more likely to get the violin that you really like if you do that. Um, I mean, and we all have, as violin makers, we all have our own kind of areas, our own little little nuances, little little sort of things that we do well and we like doing. And so, you know, find the violin maker that works for you, so to speak. So, as I say, I I, I do make very standard maple and spruce violins like that one which will fit into an orchestra and so on but i also i often make things which are a little bit oddball so for example this is this is pretty oddball this is a violin cornerless violin in bog oak so this this wood is about four thousand years old and because of that we wanted to make a sort of make it uh let me see if i can somehow light this so you can see the scroll I don't I don't think the scroll is gonna be very easy to light but it's got a carving of a green man because this has got a sort of feel of age and antiquity about it because the wood being 4,000 years old I we also decided to go for something almost like a church carving on the top it's an octave violin so what does this one sound like? First, it sounds wildly different to that one for sure. So, I mean, whilst I'm talking about making things, I mean, basically this, I, I'm making things like this for about the sort of three and a half thousand pound mark. Um, that that violin there, just under three thousand, two thousand nine hundred. Uh, that's on the website for. Um, this isn't on the website because it's sold already. But you can just there are deposit slots for sale on my website. Buy one of those and talk about what we want, and we'll we'll do it. Uh, so what should I play on this lovely thing? Um, Eleanor Plunkett. Yeah, gosh, what a thing. I actually live uh, in Somerset in England uh, in a little village called Norton Sapandon, and down the road there's another village called Hazelbury Plucknett. And there was a family from Hazelbury Plucknett who, I think, as part of the whole oppression of the Irish, if you like, by, by the English, kind of moved out to Ireland many, many, many years ago. Um, probably about Oliver Cromwell's time, I think. And um, Eleanor Plunkett, that tune, is that Plunkett, Plucknett, it's all a derivation of the same name, basically. So, in a weird kind of way, that uh, history has tied me in with that tune. Very strange. But anyway, I digress. I digress. Get in touch if you're interested in buying anything. Uh, if we're talking or talking about a project, look after yourselves. Cheers, folks. Bye.